Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. We wanted to take a stab at OBS overlays. It's actually a really simple approach, but I think very effective and could be eye-opening in a lot of ways to make something extremely simple and customizable, but again, very powerful. Let's dig into it. Once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies and basic knowledge concepts so that you can know about them and make good use of them. Thank you so much for joining in. I wanted to get in today into a really, it's basic at the core, but it's really powerful. And that's the idea of OBS overlays. I'm in OBS right now recording this video as I'm talking to you. And you'll notice along the bottom, there's this kind of, there, the video term would be third, um, but it's, it's like a banner or an overlay in OBS terms of some additional information that I keep up and I added on as a layer. Now, those are actually really easy to concoct. You might have some fears of working with image tools or coming up with something that looks like a good fit. And you could take that approach, but you can make simple animated overlays with just a few lines of code, and I want to take you through this. So let's hop over to the workspace here and take a look at what we're doing. Now, this is based on jQuery. I just went out and grabbed the latest one. Um, if you Google jQuery, it's impossible to miss. All right. um, you can copy and bring down the code, and I've saved a local copy here. Um, all that really is is that when you get the code from jQuery, which is an open source technology, it's absolutely free. Uh, it brings up a page when you try to download it of this long thing of code. In fact, why don't I just do that now? It's just simpler, right? Let's just do jQuery. Download. Download jQuery. And what I did, what this is based on right now, is this one here, uncompressed development. Um, this one, I believe, is just the min edition, which is kind of a stripped down, truncated version, which I don't really know that that would break what we're trying to do here, but this is the one I used here, just if you're looking for consistency. When you click on that, that brings up the, the code in window, and it's really just a matter of copying all that information, going somewhere you want to to save it, I'm just going to make a new text document. That's the best way to do this. And I'm going to call it jQuery2. And you do have to change the the um, file extension after the fact. So just you have to flip that on in Windows if you haven't done that already. And yes, I want to change that. And then we have a JS file. And then when I edit that, I'm just going to put all that code in there that we just copied and save it. And voila, we have a jQuery copy local. Now, understanding that basic premise, um, I want to demonstrate what I've achieved here. And again, this, these are basic examples, but they can be scaled very, very easily because it's just based on code. So jQuery supports basic animation aspects, which are purely browser driven because uh, it runs inside of a browser. It's really cool. I'm going to cut back to camera view here. And I'm going to flip on over to the, uh, the no overlay. I'm going to flip on example one. All right. That is example one. And it fades out very, very gracefully. And then there's prospect number two, which is kind of a slide up and then fade out very gradually. So very stylish, very simple but also very effective. It has a nice graduated look to it uh, that I think looks pretty snazzy. It looks pretty professional. So you've noticed I kept my original one and, and, and you may be asking, well, why do you have your original one? Well, the answer is I want to remake mine. <laughs> I just want to use this technology and do it up to the way I want it. So that's where this is going. All right. So now back to the workspace. So we're going to close out. That's jQuery. We'll get back to this in a second. All right, so again, don't be daunted by this. If you've never seen code before, this is actually not, not so bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's a basic HTML layout. 
if you're curious to find out the basic structure of HTML, really it's all tag based. You have the HTML element, which opens and then closes. You have the header, which preloads things, header open, header close, and then there's the body elements and body close. Okay, that's the basic premise of HTML. And there's obviously more detailed pieces, but that's the structure of it. What I'm doing here is mostly in the header where we add styles, which are the, um, the colors and the sizes and the things that we apply to objects and things that are in the page here. Uh, this is this is what kind of gives it, you know, a little bit of girth. And I have two styles, one of which uh, is applied to one element and another style for another one. And then this is the jQuery script. It's JavaScript. jQuery is a JavaScript library. So if you already have some familiarity with Java JavaScript, this should be really, really easy. And this is the basic animate function. There's, of course, more to it, but you're calling styling properties within it to achieve animation. Um, and again, these are CSS uh, styles. So we're just calling the same properties within an animate function. And I have these samples, by the way, I should mention that. Uh, that was what that other window is, is that I have a get my very first GitHub uh, where I'm gonna make this available to you where you can go get these things and use them and modify them and just have them as a sample and try them out, all right? Uh, but that's the basic idea here, is that it's just a, a, a pure <laughs> JavaScript and CSS driven animation. Uh, and the reason that's cool is that it almost harkens back to the days of Flash. This is not Flash, but it's the same idea where there's programmable animation, easily changeable programmable um, animation. And to demonstrate how easy this is, you saw on the second slide over, I'm going to cut back to that, this one, where it says photo learningism, I'm going to show you right now how easy it is to change things. Okay. I am going to hop back over to Workspace. And let's say I want to change the some of the colors and things. All right. So... I'm going to take out this, this This is a hexadecimal color thing, which you can get uh, from an image editor. I'll show you that in a minute. Or you can actually use just plain words. Um, there are a few color words that you can use, blue, black, white, those all work. I'll just do blue so you can see this for sake of demonstration. And what's something else we can change? I'm going to change the word down here because this is what it looks at. So say another name. I'm going to save that and then we're going to flip back over here in the test. That wasn't so bad. A couple of quick changes and again very easily updated and that could be your name, that could be your company name, other information, your website. You could change the branding to be your colors. Right now I'm building this based on a gradient and one of those is transparent, uh, just so it looks a little cleaner. It kind of blends in with the background a little more seamlessly. So you can change that one as well, but that's the thinking here of, of what, what's going on. All right. There are other properties you can also change. Uh, the font sizes, the font family. There's even ways where you can load in. Uh, Google has a font service, which you can tack a source onto here, and that's really simple, and I want to play more with that. But you can do it. And you can add a really, really interesting font if you, you know, none of the built-in fonts work for you. Uh, so that's definitely an option, absolutely an option. Um, so to actually add this into OBS, then let me show you that part. That's where some of the magic happens. Is you need to add an overlay. So let's cook up OBS here, and I can show you how to do that. Okay, so inside of there, what we would do is, I already have like a test source here, so our scene rather, but within that you add a source, and it's actually just going to be a browser, okay? You can give that whatever name you like, and this is the fun part. You click local file, you navigate to where that is. Mine's buried. 
as is everything else. And I'm going to grab this one. And this you just need to make sure you set to whatever resolution you are recording at. Um, I'm at HD, so that is 1920 by 1080. And the last thing you want to do is just check this box down here, which is to refresh the browser when the scene becomes active. So when I pop onto that scene, it restarts the animation automatically and fires once and done. Okay. So I'm saying okay. There it is. So again, simple concepts, simple technology. This code is, is not that deep and not that complex, but it produces an effective result here, which I just think is so cool. So um, again, I'm putting these these two simple things up there, these sample templates up on my GitHub, which I will share a link to in the description below. So help yourself to those. Feel free to modify them and try them out and do all kinds of nifty, crazy things. And then comment about that and let's share uh, what you've created because uh, that's how we make each other strong, all right? We share our learning experiences. Um, as a note, for this to work, you do need to have both a jQuery file and the HTML in the same folder. Wherever you put them, they just have to live together, okay? Um, having said that, I think that's really the, the gist of the, of the discovery here for today, and I really hope that's helpful. So I want to thank you for jumping in and, and watching and enduring this walkthrough of this uh, new idea. Uh, maybe you've discovered this before, but for me, this was really cool. I, I like where this is going. And... Um, Give me a thumbs up if it resonated with you, if it helped you to learn something new, um, or if it was just interesting so I can know what kind of content is, is useful. And also consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the great new projects that are coming up down the road. Thanks again for spending your time with me. I'll see you at the next video.